Hey students, this is lesson 524. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to multiply binomials that involves subtraction. And just to give you an idea what that subtraction looks like, uh, let's say that we start with a square right here that where both dimensions are d. So the area of that is d squared. Uh, let's say if we add a little bit to the length of that to represent this quantity right here, d plus 3. So this is 3. Well, right now we have an area of d times the quantity d plus 3. Now, if our other dimension is 1 less than d, what that would represent is that we're actually cutting off a part of this. So we're going to have to subtract that piece from our original part, which is d times quantity d plus 3, and that since we're subtracting 1, that width is 1, and then this length is d plus 3. So we're subtracting 1 times the quantity d plus 3. And if you expand that, that would be d squared plus 3d minus 1d minus 3. And again, we can simplify that part of it, and we get d squared plus 2d minus 3 as the area left over. Um, since, I, since we learned how to make an area diagram by using a window, we're going to do that again. So this is a multiplication table. So that's times. And we'll just represent this b minus 2 as b and then a negative 2, or the minus 2. And then the other dimension is b and 3. And so when we multiply this, this corner will be b squared. This corner will be negative 2 times b. This corner will be 3 times b. And this corner will be a negative 6. And then these two are like terms, so we can combine those. And we get b squared plus b minus 6 for our final expression. You can go ahead and try these two if you want. Set up that window to create a table to help you multiply those. All right, uh, the other thing we need to learn in this lesson is right here, find this part. Um, we're going to talk about how you can uh, prove something or not prove something using a thing called a counterexample. And I'll give you a demonstration of what a counterexample is. What it is is an example for which a conjecture or an idea that doesn't work. So Tommy, he thinks that all odd numbers are divisible by 3. Is he right? And I hope you're thinking that uh, an odd number like 3 is divisible by 3 because 3 divided by 3 is 1, and it's divisible because the quotient is a whole number. Uh, but if you take a number like 5, which is odd, and when you divide that by 3, you get a number that's not whole. So um, 5 is not divisible by 3 because you don't get a whole number when you divide it. And that's what's called a counterexample. Uh, 5 is a counterexample to Tommy's claim that all odd numbers are divisible by 3. Now, in the second problem here, it says Jordan claims there's only one even prime number. Is she correct? If she is, explain why. Now remember that a prime number is any number. So a prime number is any number that has exactly two factors, and those factors are one in itself. Uh, so Jordan thinks there's only one even prime number, and she must be thinking about the number two. So to, to prove that uh, she's correct, we're going to look at other even prime numbers. And really, the only way we can look at all even prime numbers is if we represent them with a variable. So let's let A be any whole number, except 1. And then 2A represents any even number. Now, to show that uh, 2A is divisible by itself, we can just divide it by itself, and that equals 1. So that shows that it's divisible by itself. To show that it's divisible by 1, we can just divide 2a by 1, and that's 2a. 
And um, so what we're going to try and do is show that there's another number that 2a is divisible by. And I think it's also divisible by 2 because 2a divided by 2 equals a. And we know that a is a whole number because we said it was. And so we, can, we have just now shown that 2a is divisible by more than 2. It has more than two factors. It has the factor of 2a, a factor of 1, and a factor of 2. So we've just proven that uh, her claim is correct. All right, so on these next few problems here, we're either going to try and find a counterexample to show it's not true, or we're going to prove that it is true using a little bit of algebra. So in this first problem, Olivia says, take any four consecutive integers, multiply the least number and the greatest number, then multiply the remaining two numbers. If you subtract the first product from the second, you will always get two. So we need to somehow represent four consecutive integers. Let's let x be the first of those. And the next consecutive integer is like uh, just one more than that. So we can call that x plus 1. The third one we can call x plus 2. And the fourth we can call x plus 3. So in order, this would be the first, the second, the third, and the fourth. All right, now her claim is that if you multiply the least and the greatest, uh, and then multiply the remaining two numbers, if you subtract the first product from the second, you will always get two. Well, the multiplying the least and the greatest, that would be multiplying these two. So if we take x times quantity x plus 3, and then she says multiply the remaining two numbers, that would be those two. So x times the quantity, x plus 1 times the quantity x plus 2. Uh, she says if you subtract the first product from the second, you will always get 2. So she's saying that this equals 2. Um, we're going to either try to prove that or disprove it. Now, you could, you could just take a random four consecutive numbers and try and disprove it, like 9, 10, 11, and 12. So if you take 9 times 12, that's 108, and subtract that from 10 times 11, that's 110. Uh, in this case, she's right. You get 2. And you could try a couple other examples, but all the examples I've tried, I always get 2. So I'm going to try and prove that it's true using this expression. So I'm going to multiply x plus 1 times the quantity x plus 2. And uh, to do that, we need to multiply x plus x, uh, x times 2, x times 1, and 1 times 2. And then we're going to subtract this quantity over here, x times quantity x plus 3. That's x squared plus 3x. And I'm going to simplify that expression. So I get x squared plus 3x plus 2 minus x squared minus 3x. And here I have plus 3x and here I have minus 3x, so that's 0. Here I have x squared and here I have minus x squared, so that's 0. And notice that the only thing you're left with is 2. So this algebra shows that her conjecture is true. All right, that's going to be the kind of thing that we're going to be doing next time we meet in class. <coughs> Try the next problem if you want, and the rest of it we'll learn in class. Here.